Um, yes, thanks for uh, having uh, invited me. Uh, it's, um, I couldn't come uh, f the first week, unfortunately. Uh, it's, it's nice to, to be here. It's my second time uh, on the, in the land of peace, as Johai Caspi uh, called it. <laughs> uh, the first time uh, was for Tsvi Maze's uh, birthday, and I had a little uh, 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 political discussion at the beginning uh, uh, because I was not very happy about the situation in Israel, and I compared the uh, um, 1984 book with the uh, uh, Israel state at permanent war. Uh, it seems, unfortunately, didn't. Uh, um, it, it wasn't a, a dead blow to uh, Netanyahu's candidature, um, and uh, uh, unfortunately, the situation has spread all over the world. Uh, in France and in uh, in the U.S., there are very concerning things about uh, guns, as we were discussing with with Dave. Uh, so the message here is, uh, well, I don't know what's happening, but we should be aware that a lot of people have interest in uh, uh, having a, a situation of war so that they are able to sell weapons, and uh, um, uh, we should try to avoid that. But it's, it's a complicated uh, situation. So let's... Uh, uh, move on to uh, uh, more happy things and uh, uh, to discuss what's in the sky <laughs> and uh, <laughs> the physics of um, substellar objects, mostly uh, planets. And I'm going to focus on, on interiors. Uh, actually, I have some uh, uh, lecture uh, notes uh, that come from a... Uh, uh, school in SASFE I gave uh, back in 2001 and uh, you can find uh, uh, the notes here maybe uh, later I can get some printouts I don't know it's uh, uh, this is 130 pages uh, uh, more or less uh, so I'm, I'm gonna follow a little bit this but adding some some stuff so basically I don't know how much uh, uh, we will cover. I'm going to try to use that. Uh, but the idea is to uh, uh, study uh, our giant planets, uh, derive basic equations, uh, gravitational moments into your structure, talk about the equation of state, and then opacities and heat transport, uh, and and uh, uh, talk more in in the next lectures on interior structures and then evolution of, of giant planets. Um, okay, so let's uh, uh, talk about our giant planets. So they uh, possess ninety nine point five percent of the mass of all other objects in the in the solar system except the sun. So the, the giant planets are really uh, uh, important uh, uh, laboratories. Oh, uh, yeah, I don't know, for some reason, uh, some of the names have uh, disappeared. But um, yeah, so they're, they're really important uh, in order to have a, a good understanding of our solar system, its global composition and, uh, and its formation, our origin. Uh, so you see, if you uh, uh, count the masses in, in Earth masses of all the, the planets, uh, the, the inner planets are there, mostly it's the Earth and Venus, and then you have Jupiter, uh, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and uh, all the, uh, um, what is there, uh, yeah, the asteroids and this kind of stuff. Uh, uh, the copper belt objects, sorry, are, are over there, and then there's the old cloud. Uh, that's an estimated mass. But you, you can see that the four giant planets, and especially Jupiter and Saturn, are really dominating the, the system. And they are made of uh, uh, some heavy elements and a lot of hydrogen and helium. But even if you, if you count just the, the heavy elements, and, and not the hydrogen and helium, 
uh, they got uh, the, the big share uh, of, the, of the solid mass that was present in the protosolar disk. So those guys are uh, important. So what do we know about them? Uh, well, we have uh, the possibility to measure masses, radii, and also, as we'll see, uh, gravitational fields. Um, and, uh, 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 okay, but we'll, we'll discuss that a little bit more later. But, so, um, uh, yes, uh, Jupiter is 300 Earth masses, Saturn about 100 Earth masses, and Uranus and Neptune about 15 Earth masses. Jupiter is about 10 times uh, larger than the Earth, uh, linearly, in radius. Saturn, uh, a little smaller, like nine times. And Uranus, Neptune, about uh, four times the Earth. So uh, they're, they're really uh, uh, quite large and low density. Uh, as we'll see, this is something that has been known for a long, long time. Uh, the density of, of Jupiter is about 1.3. For Saturn, is, it's less than 1. Uh, and Uranus and Neptune, it's around uh, 3, I believe. They're all rotating quite fast. Uh, sorry, it's in, it's in, in seconds here. Uh, uh, so basically, Jupiter and Saturn are rotating in 10 hours. Uh, and Uranus and Neptune about uh, 17. And because of that, they are flattened. As we'll see, it gives uh, a lot of information to constrain their interior. Uh, they have uh, magnetic fields, uh, and uh, uh, their magnetic fields are, are all very interesting. Uh, Jupiter has a, a really strong magnetic field. Uh, the, the magnetic field is, uh, is slightly tilted, um, as is the case of the Earth uh, magnetic field, for example, so tilted rela relative to the rotation axis. Saturn's magnetic field is uh, axisymmetric to the, to the precision of the measurements. Uh, and this is something that was uh, completely unexpected. Uh, and is, is not, it's not clear why it's the case uh, still, uh, still now. Um, and for Uranus and Neptune, uh, their magnetic fields are mostly quadrupolar, and actually if you try to represent them as a dipole, uh, they are uh, off-center and really highly tilted compared to the, to the rotation rate. Uh, to the rotation uh, spin axis. Are the currents basically what? The currents? That, that, that assumes that there's no Oh, uh, so th those magnetic fields are measured uh, outside of the of the planets. Uh, so there's no uh, uh, current. Uh, uh, involved, so it's it's just uh, if you if you go out there and uh, uh, you 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 make measurements with a spacecraft. So, you, for example, this is the trajectory of uh, Voyager One. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't know why I plotted that. <laughs> it's been a long time, but uh, 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 so it did uh, it did a, a passage inside the. Uh, uh, I guess this, uh, uh, yeah, Voyager 1, it must be Jupiter, uh, in Jupiter's magnetic field and did measurements at, at some locations. Uh, and then from that, we're trying to reconstruct uh, the full uh, uh, magnetic field. I guess uh, the question is, what is the source? Where are the currents which carry this magnetic field? Ah, in the internal part of the... Ah, in the, in the interior, okay, okay. Uh, uh, yes, uh, so uh, as we'll see, um, these, these planets are uh, ionized uh, in the interior and uh, they're convective. So you have uh, uh, s uh, strong convective motions that generate uh, the, the magnetic fields. Uh, 
Uh, okay, so that, that creates that. So, uh, yeah, and, and this is uh, something I, I will not actually uh, talk about. Uh, but uh, it's, it's definitely something that is important, carries a lot of information, uh, and uh, hasn't been used uh, uh, that much uh, so far. So with, with Cassini uh, at Saturn, we have a, a very uh, precise view of Saturn's magnetic field. Um, uh, unfortunately, uh, because of the rings and the material around, uh, it's, uh, it's probably filtered and we don't know exactly what is the, the magnetic field of the planet uh, itself. So with, the, with um, uh, the Cassini solstice mission, so the last orbits when the, the spacecraft will move very close to the planet, we hope to, to be able to get these measurements close in. And with Juno uh, at Jupiter, uh, um, that's going to arrive in 2017, uh, we're going to have uh, 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 this year, sorry, sorry, this year, uh, uh, in, in, uh, in July, uh, we're going to have a very precise uh, mapping of, of Jupiter's magnetic field. He got confused because in Jerusalem we always say next year in Jerusalem. <laughs> <laughs> so we also have uh, uh, a lot of data on uh, atmospheric compositions. Yes? I didn't catch why Cassini did not do a good job in measuring the magnetic field of Saturn. Uh, oh, it's, uh, it, it, uh, it's just that uh, uh, you have Saturn, but Saturn has, has rings, and there's, there's some, some currents uh, involved uh, in, in the... Uh, th there's there's uh, a, a lot of, of, of ionized particles around there, uh, and uh, uh, they create currents, and those could affect the, the magnetic field. Uh, so it's, uh, it's interesting to go, I mean, Cassini has been orbiting uh, quite far. Uh, from from uh, the, the the planet itself, uh, uh, but uh, it, it will uh, eventually uh, go very close in. So we'll have some uh, uh, very precise measurements of the uh, of the magnetic field. Uh, you can have some some perturbations of the of the magnetic fields. Um, uh, yeah, it's. Uh, it's a little hard to, to discuss in detail, but uh, um, if, if you go very close to the object, uh, uh, you get some more information. Uh, uh, but, but basically, uh, it's also the case in, uh, in, in Jupiter. You have a lot of particles flowing in uh, in this system, uh, uh, and they, uh, they are ionized. Uh, it's not the particles of the rings themselves, but, but uh, particles detaching from that, uh, uh, gases. Uh, so you have a plasma around, and it, uh, it uh, can filter out some uh, 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 magnetic field modes. Uh, okay. So... Uh, about atmospheric compositions, a uh, lot, lots of uh, measurements have been made. In, uh, in Jupiter, we had uh, really uh, an amazing uh, experiment with Galileo. Uh, in 1995, uh, it was both a spacecraft that uh, uh, arrived in orbit uh, at, around Jupiter and uh, sent a probe. Uh, in the atmosphere. And uh, from that we had direct measurements of the composition of the planet. Uh, so um, uh, we have abundances for all these species and in this table they're uh, measured relative to hydrogen. So you have helium, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, sulfur, 
the noble gases uh, and, and things like uh, uh, germanium and arsen uh, and uh, uh, the, the main carriers are, are listed here. Uh, so some uh, generally uh, for these planets because they're made of a lot of hydrogen and helium you, you compare the abundances to uh, solar abundances and uh, uh, actually you compare to the, the proto-sun uh, because the sun has evolved uh, slightly uh, during f 4 billion years uh, and uh, so, so you make ratios so for we know that helium is depleted compared to the, to the proto-sun in, uh, in Jupiter and in Saturn uh, in Saturn, there's been no probe, so it's more difficult to infer. It's just by spec spectroscopy. Uh, and in Uranus and Neptune, we also have measurements for helium, but uh, with very large error bars. Uh, and then uh, some elements are uh, enriched, like carbon, nitrogen. Uh, oxygen hasn't been measured. Uh, sulfur. So what are these numbers? What does 0.8 mean? So zero, uh, oh, maybe you can't see well. It's the ratio of the abundance in the planet to that in the <coughs> proto-sun. So 0 0.8 means uh, you have 20% less helium than uh, uh, would be the case if you take <coughs> the solar composition uh, directly. So this is a sign that helium uh, has... Uh, uh, fold in uh, and form, form droplets, as we will see, and settled in inside the planet. Uh, four means that uh, you have uh, a significant enrichment in carbon, nitrogen, uh, sulfur, but also in noble gases. Unfortunately, uh, we can't do uh, all these measurements uh, in the other planets because for the noble gases we definitely need a probe because they don't have uh, spectral signatures uh, and, and so there's no, uh, um, uh, there's, there's no comparison uh, unfortunately available. Yes? How do you know what the uh, proto-sun abundances are as opposed to say Oh, this is, this is through models uh, of the sun. So basically, the important thing is that uh, in the sun, you have an uh, outer convective zone and inner radiative zone, and you have a, a gradual settling of some elements. So, for example, the, uh, the abundance of helium in the sun presently is about the same as, uh, as uh, in Jupiter. Uh, but... Uh, this, uh, the 20% helium uh, uh, lacking in, in the sun has settled. Uh, and this is uh, relatively precisely uh, uh, calculated by, by models now. Uh, and actually there's a, a graphic uh, f that uh, shows uh, the measurements for Jupiter and Saturn. Uh, so uh, for the, the important uh, species. So you see here, uh, uh, one would be the, the protosolar value everywhere. So uh, helium is depleted, both in Jupiter and, and uh, Saturn. Neon is also uh, very much depleted. And uh, this is something that uh, had been uh, predicted by Dave uh, 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 before the, the Galileo measurements and this is because neon likes to go with, with helium in the droplets and uh, so it's, it's quite efficiently uh, um, uh, depleted. But uh, the, the big surprise was that both for the noble gases and for species like carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, uh, sulfur and phosphorus you have an enrichment compared to the sun. So that, that was uh, known before Galileo because of spectroscopic measurements. And the idea was that uh, Jupiter received uh, quite a lot of planetesimals, uh, so solid material. 
So naturally, its, its envelope uh, uh, had to be enriched in, uh, in uh, other elements. But everyone thought that the argon, krypton, and xenon, which are uh, very difficult to trap, they're gases, they're, they condense only at very, very low temperatures, like uh, uh, 30K or, uh, uh, for, for argon, uh, for example. So those would, would, would be solar, and it's, it's not the case. Um, uh, I think this is related to something that occurred in the, in the protosolar disk and linked to the evaporation of hydrogen and helium. But oh, uh, if, uh, this is something that's, that's been, uh, maybe I wouldn't have wor worded it that way, but uh, it, uh, it's the idea that uh, if you take uh, protosolar gas, uh, in the disk and you capture it directly to form Jupiter, uh, then you would have uh, an abundance of, of one. Okay, but it's, maybe it's, it's more confusing than helpful uh, uh, for this diagram. Uh, Uh, okay, it's a, it's a good question. Uh, uh, well, we, we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, helium doesn't like to be with, hydrogen, with metallic hydrogen and so tends to form droplets. Uh, so it's, it's because of its uh, uh, bonds with, with metallic hydrogen. Uh, and, uh, and then it's also it's, uh, abundant and uh, it's uh, easier to separate, uh, to have a phase separation of, of an element that has a, a significant abundance than, than an element that uh, has a very low abundance. So if you add a lot of sugar in your coffee, for example, <coughs> some will not dissolve. But if you add just a little bit, it will be m easier to, to dissolve. So. Uh, uh, helium is uh, uh, about 20% by mass in abundance, but the other species like uh, carbon uh, or oxygen, you're, you're at less than 1%, much less than 1% by mass. Yes? Yes? Okay, so I, I don't know if Adam will uh, uh, talk about that. <laughs> where, where is Adam? Uh, okay, he's here. Uh, are you going to talk about that? But uh, a little bit, right? I'm mostly focusing on general dynamics and then exoplanets. Okay, so the, uh, uh, I mean, one, one uh, idea is that there's, uh, these hotspots are. Uh, 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 signatures of a wave and you have a, a downdraft at, at this location yeah, and then
all of those are strongly affected by the urology. So even though uh, ammonia only condenses at pressures less than a half a bar, it was uh, it didn't rise to sort of three times solar until eight bars. H2S condenses with ammonia at, at two bars, but it didn't rise to sort of a full value until 16 bars. Yeah. So it's like basically a, a region that's two scale heights or more thick below the condensation levels for all the things that can condense or not. Uh, this Rossby Way model explains that because it would predict all, all three of the condensables would be created over some range of depth below the condensation level. So it wouldn't explain yeah. things like, like helium or when you have uh, condensing there. Yeah, so. so uh, uh, I was not thinking <laughs> of going <laughs> through uh, the discussion uh, uh, there, but it's it's uh, interesting uh, um, and nice. And uh, uh, yeah, basically we we don't know uh, what the the water abundance is, uh, and it's been a big problem because water is is such a, an important uh, uh, element, uh, both to understand formation. Uh, uh, the formation of these objects, but also meteorology. Uh, it carries a lot of latent heat when it uh, uh, condenses, and uh, so it's a, it's a big big driver of, of the giant planet's uh, meteorology. And uh, we don't know its abundance. So f for the facts, uh, this, this point is where the Galileo probe uh, did the last measurement at 22 bars. And uh, the abundance of water was still increasing at that point. Uh, so we don't know uh, whether, uh, I mean, wha what the real abundance is. Uh, it's probably higher because in order to explain most of the storms, etc., generally people need uh, at least a solar abundance, uh, but probably more of water. But, but in, in reality, we, we don't know. And it's, it's one of the objectives of Juno uh, to, to measure the deep water abundance uh, through radiometry. I heard that the, the, the probe was kind of strong into the desert on, on that planet, is that true? It was, uh, well, so if... It has kind of bias. Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, maybe, yeah. Uh, it, yeah, it was sent into a very p particular region. I mean, if, if you have... Uh, uh, if, if you take Jupiter like this, and this is the great red spot, then the, the, uh, these hot spots are like this. Uh, uh, and uh, so, so they're, they're, they're really small. <laughs> and uh, uh, as uh, uh, Adam uh, mentioned, there's uh, this, this uh, uh, wave. Uh, and it was by it chance. It so was not deliberate to throw it into a hotspot. Yes. <coughs> and actually, uh, I have a spectra of a hotspot. These hotspots actually were uh, are, uh, studied spectroscopically because they're regions where you have no clouds. Uh, Jupiter is very cloudy uh, in general. But in these regions, you have uh, uh, much fewer clouds. And there's a lot of emission <coughs> that comes out of these spots. They're very bright at five microns, although they they are uh, uh, quite small uh, compared to the rest of the planet. Uh, and uh, uh, so, actually, when you, we look at uh, exoplanets, uh, small areas uh, can have uh, uh, important uh, uh, signatures. And and this is because you're seeing through. Uh, inside Jupiter in a region which is warmer, so y it's, it's emitting more flux there. Mm -hmm. so, at which level do this sense the so this, uh, so as I said, the probe went to 22 bars. Okay, okay. so all it's, all and, and uh, uh, so th there were some uh, measurements, uh, uh, you know, for, for helium, uh, it was from a fraction of a bar to uh, uh, yeah, a few bars. Uh, generally, it's in the, in the troposphere, OK? Uh, um, yeah, you have uh, um, uh, ammonia condenses uh, at um, uh, 0.5 bars, something like that. 
to form clouds there. Uh, so in order to have its uh, bulk abundance, you need to go deeper. So as uh, Adam mentioned, uh, if uh, w we had a depletion in ammonia till a few bars, and then uh, and then we we went to the we got the bulk abundance. Uh, for for CH4, it doesn't condense, so uh, the measurements apply to uh, uh, the, all the region from a fraction of a bar to uh, a few bars. Okay. To, to f Yes. In uh, uh, ammonia is uh, ah in spots. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't I don't know about that, but uh, but you can have some uh, uh, very complex. Uh, 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 processes uh, uh, occurring uh, uh, at higher altitudes uh, uh, linked to vortexes and stuff like that. So I'm not surprised by that. Uh, uh, but here we're trying to get the bulk abundances and uh, uh, not the what, what's happening in the stratosphere and things like that. So th th there are lots of elements that you can measure uh, at altitudes of a fraction of a bar or two uh, millibars uh, uh, also, but they, uh, they will trace processes occurring in the high atmosphere uh, and, and not what's uh, uh, more relevant for the bulk composition. Okay, so for to fix up things, uh, uh, Jenny, uh, we like to uh, draw these kind of, of diagrams where, well, this is not working. Uh, oh, <laughs> it's worse. Well, okay. <laughs> uh, uh, where is the red one? Yeah, I put the red marker. <laughs> oh, here. Okay. Yes. It's um, so you have uh, log p. I mean p increasing, but in, in pressure. And here you have one bar, and this is temperature, and. Uh, 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 and uh, you have a structure like that. Oh, actually, I have it uh, later. Um, so here you have the, the tropopause, and, uh, and this is the troposphere. And this is the stratosphere. There are lots of meteorological uh, uh, phenomena occurring and lots of measurements. Uh, uh, spectroscopical measurements applied to this region. So maybe this is, uh, sorry, this is uh, 0.1 bar. And, uh, uh, and condensation, uh, uh, so you have condensation lines for uh, uh, NH3 around, around there and then uh, uh, H H two O, uh, and so you have you have H uh, two O clouds deeper and NH NH three clouds deeper. Uh, so all, all the in all this region, when you have a condensable species, you're affected by by condensation. Uh, but you you're trying to infer what is the balance, and to uh, really link. Uh, atmospheric measurement to what's happening in the interior. Okay, so let's, uh, okay, I'm not going to explain that. No, I'm not going to explain that. Okay, so let's move. Oh, so those are the temperature structures. Um, so uh, uh, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, and it's been a, a very important point, uh, uh, emit more uh, energy than they receive from the sun. Uh, so you see here the absorbed power, emitted power, and there's a, an intrinsic uh, a flux. Uh, so, uh, so all these planets, uh, uh, <laughs> all these planets uh, are uh, emit some uh, some energy, except Uranus, which is. Uh, uh, quite uh, mysterious because uh, 
uh, it seems to be in equilibrium with the sun. Uh, the temperatures are uh, between 60K, uh, the effective temperatures 225K. Uh, okay, so it's uh, much smaller than uh, stars, obviously. And, and this is what I was uh, dra drawing. So this is a temperature uh, pressure plot. Uh, you're going uh, deeper into the interior uh, when you're going down. Uh, so you have the tropopause here, a condensation of uh, ammonia over there and there in uh, uh, Jupiter and Saturn. And in Uranus and Neptune, you have condensation of methane as well. So methane form clouds there. And then water condenses deeper down in, in, uh, in Jupiter, uh, you see around uh, here, um, and, uh, and still deeper in other planets. So that's why it's so difficult to measure. Yes? Yes. No, it's it's a coincidence. Uh, uh, so the absorbed power is really the the sunlight absorbed by by the planet. Uh, but you see that uh, it, well, it's it's comparable in yeah in, in most of the. Uh, of the planets except Uranus, so it's it's not a it's not a rule. So yes, it's a it's a coincidence. Yes, but. Uh, Yes, yes, maybe we will uh, manage to get <laughs> that far. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but uh, yes, it's, but it's a coincidence, basically. And if you take uh, uh, a hot Jupiter, uh, the intrinsic power is uh, 10 to the 4 times less than the uh, absorbed power. So this is just uh, the spectrum of uh, five micron hotspots. So you can uh, 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 see that there are uh, absorption bands uh, of uh, various uh, elements. So mostly it's CH4 that absorbs over there. Uh, and uh, uh, these, these uh, five micron hotspots are called like that because they emit a lot at five microns. And, uh, Basically, what, what, you, what you're seeing here is, uh, are two components. One is the uh, reflected uh, spectrum uh, of, the, uh, of the sun in the, in the visible, I mean, or near infrared. Uh, and, uh, and then you have the um, uh, intrinsic uh, uh, thermal uh, radiation from the uh, from the planet, okay, so a black body which is at uh, around 120k. Uh, but in some regions, you're able to probe much deeper, so you're probing levels which are much hotter, especially if there are no clouds. So uh, this is the case uh, of these five micron hotspots. Uh, and it depends a lot on, the, on which species is absorbing. So. Uh, these, these spectra carry a lot of information. Okay, so, uh, well, Adam showed you that. So these, uh, uh, all these planets are, are rotating, have a complex weather uh, with jets. And, uh, and you see that uh, they are very complex. So this I those are really uh, uh, ammonia clouds, probably, that we're seeing. But a lot of the, of the colors uh, are due to very, very minor species, and we don't know what there are, actually. Uh, for example, the great red spot uh, 
uh, it's a hi high pressure uh, uh, it's a high pressure region and probably we're seeing things which are lofted quite high up uh, uh, in the in the atmosphere uh, this interaction with the um, solar radiation etc so uh, it's uh, very very complex but a lot of that uh, occurs in the stratosphere so this is Saturn we have uh, 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 in some wavelength Saturn looks like Jupiter and some uh, uh, we can have some movies uh, Uranus and Neptune appear more bland in comparison uh, uh, so this is an HST image I believe Neptune has more activity so it's in line with the fact that it has a higher uh, intrinsic uh, uh, power than, than uh, Uranus so there's more convective motions there uh, and those are uh, methane clouds. Uh, and, uh, <coughs> okay. Yes? So on Jupiter, I, I think I remember you mentioned that people actually need enough water in Jupiter to get plants to grow. So is that the same as on Uh, uh, yeah, th there's, um, there's no surface per se, so uh, what we're seeing are ammonia clouds. Uh, but actually from time to time we have some, some storms that are more powerful and, and must be triggered by, by water down below. Uh, uh, when you go deeper and deeper, uh, 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 so here uh, uh, water condenses and has v very low abundances but much deeper uh, it's, uh, uh, it's in vapor form and it has its bulk abundance and, and so uh, you have these storms uh, being formed and uh, uh, they, they, they go up but, but the water settles down uh, so you, you don't see it, and then you have ammonia uh, that condensates uh, there, and uh, w what you're seeing is just, just what's left at, at the top. But uh, a, a lot of it comes from the, from the bottom. Okay. It's worth mentioning that when people use the word storm, what they're referring to is very active convective features that have lightning in them. You can see on the night side, and those cover a very tiny fraction of the area of the planet. So the clouds that you're seeing when you look at Jupiter are not storms. So by that definition, the great red spot, all these other large vortices, they're not storms. There's no lightning in those features that we detected. Yeah. Um, so you know, once you the, the storms themselves are very short lived, typically, um, with some exceptions, like a huge storm on Saturn that occurred a year or two ago, uh, years ago. Uh, but uh, you know, this, once you pump energy into that layer, then you, you get it in this sort of vortex form, and the vortices are very stable and interact with each other and merge. And Okay, so uh, lastly for the, for the measurements, uh, uh, we've been able to see oscillations uh, recently. So uh, for, well, it's, it's been a subject that's been around since the 90s actually. Uh, but really uh, so the decisive uh, uh, measurements have been done uh, uh, in, the, in the last few years. So for Jupiter, uh, using a, a Doppler imager, basically, Go Metal have measured this power spectrum. So basically you're measuring uh, uh, oscillations of the, uh, I mean, motions on the planet. You're averaging over the whole planet to detect uh, global oscillation modes, a, as in the sun. And uh, uh, it's a very noisy uh, measurement, but uh, you can see that in this power spectrum, there's, uh, there's some uh, uh, increased power at around one millihertz. And uh, uh, this is where 
you would expect uh, osc oscillations to occur. And there's actually a calm structure that's also uh, in agreement with what's predicted by the, by the models. So this is uh, a very interesting measurement, still uh, to be confirmed because of, uh, there's a lot of noise. We're building instruments to be able to do that. So I hope that in the future, in the near future, we will have much better measurements. And then in Saturn, uh, what uh, happens, happened with Cassini is that uh, it detected some uh, uh, motions in the, in the rings that are not associated to uh, moons, to gravitational perturbations of moons, but, but have to be due to resonance, uh, resonances with the, the planet itself. So at some specific location in the rings, uh, uh, you have uh, some structures which uh, uh, betray the presence of, of uh, uh, oscillations in, in the planet. And really, there's no way out of that. It's, it's really a very strong uh, measurement. Uh, and uh, the, the, the rings are acting as a, a resonant cavity for these oscillations. So you're, you're able to measure tiny amplitudes of around one meter displacements on the planet thanks to that. And, and this is very important to constrain the interior structure uh, of the planet. So those are, those are the measurements that we have. Those modes? Ah, uh, no, no, it's not a coincidence at all. And actually, they, they are not so different. Uh, 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 wha what is uh, the Hedman and Nicholson uh, modes are, are F modes, but, but uh, actually the F modes are the N equals zero uh, modes of the P, of the P modes. Uh, that, uh, but uh, they have uh, they would have very low amplitudes here in the sun. It's the case, uh, uh, but but the the rings are very sensitive, especially to these modes because they're they're global modes, so they involve the whole planet, uh, so they they have a mo much more gravitational pull on the on the rings. Um, uh, even if they have uh, 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 smaller amplitudes than, than modes with more uh, nodes. Uh. Okay, so now let's move to the, to the equations and uh, uh, trying to, to understand what's inside, wh what we can't see, actually. So basically, we're uh, taking these planets as uh, gray homogeneous spheres. Uh, and we have measurements of masses, radii, luminosities. Uh, we have some constraint on the atmospheric temperature profiles, composition in the atmosphere. And then we know, generally, uh, the rotation rate and uh, the gravity field. So that, that's what we have to play with. So uh, you know from uh, uh, um, stellar structure that uh, stars are governed by these uh, hydrostatic uh, equations. So you have the uh, basic uh, hydrostatic equation between gravity and the uh, uh, pressure derivative, uh, an equation uh, which is uh, uh, that tells you how temperature is uh, transported. Uh, so basically, uh, this, this nabla T here hides all the physics uh, of heat transport. And we'll see what to do with that. We have an equation for mass continuity, dr over dm equals 1 over well, 1, uh, 4 pi r square rho. And then, uh, very importantly for the evolution of these uh, uh, objects, so stars or planets, uh, we have the energy conservation equation that tells you that in each, uh, each shell, uh, 
So if uh, okay. uh, so for each shell in the in the planet, if you have L uh, here, you will have L of M plus delta L here, where delta L will be due to the amount of uh, energy created per unit mass. I mean, delta L over de delta M will be equal to the to the uh, amount of energy produced by radioactive uh, sources, for example, and uh, to the cooling uh, and uh, work uh, uh, done in each in each shell. So, if if you have, uh, uh, for example, a contraction and uh, cooling, this will contribute to the, to the luminosity. Uh, uh. This has to be, oops, this has to be tied to uh, an equation of state, uh, density as a function of pressure, temperature, composition, entropy as a function of pressure, temperature, composition. So these are very standard uh, uh, equations. Uh, so they're very important because they govern the whole uh, structure of uh, from stars to to planets. So boundary conditions. Uh, so uh, generally we can use at the center uh, m equals zero, r equals zero. Sometimes we add a core, so uh, we can use a different uh, central boundary condition, and then. Uh, in the atmosphere, uh, generally the, the boundary condition is set at the photosphere, so exactly at, well, at the location where photons uh, on average can es escape to, s to space freely. So you have a, a pressure equal to a photospheric pressure, which will depend on the gravity, luminosity of the object, and of course composition, and, and the temperature uh, has the same kind of relationship. So, for example, you have the famous uh, Eddington approximation. Um, uh, at, at the level, uh, uh, well, it tells you that the photosphere is at uh, a pressure two, two third J over kappa, where uh, uh, kappa is in uh, uh, centimeter square per gram, so it's, the, uh, Ross, uh, it's a mean opacity. Uh, of the material, uh, G is your, is your gravity. And uh, uh, typically uh, for uh, Jupiter, for the giant planets, this value is around a fraction of a bar. So it explains why you have the, the, uh, the, the transition from the stratosphere to the troposphere takes place uh, uh, around there. Um, and at, at this pressure, the temperature should be equal to the effective temperature uh, of, of the planet. So the effective temperature is uh, uh, defined by L equals 4 pi r square sigma Tf to the fourth power. And uh, actually, uh, the, the luminosity is, is due both to the uh, intrinsic luminosity and the luminosity that's, that's absorbed uh, in the atmosphere. Uh, so the, the luminosity that, that is directly reflected uh, uh, by the planet doesn't uh, come into the energy balance, uh, uh, into the energy bu budget. And uh, uh, so, the, the effective temperature of Jupiter uh, uh, taken from this is, uh, and is the one in the table is 124K. And this indeed corresponds to, uh, uh, to, to, to this uh, value here. So it's around 100K uh, for Saturn 
and around 60k for, uh, for um, Uranus and Neptune. Okay, so the important thing, then you can have, so this, this is the Eddington approximation, uh, but you can have some uh, more involved radiative transfer models, and uh, what they will do <coughs> is uh, they, they will uh, actually tell you how to uh, change, transform effective temperature, which actually is a flux. The quantity here <coughs> is, is really a, a flux. Hmm? It's a luminosity to a physical temperature, uh, which is, uh, for example, the temperature at one bar in that case, or the temperature at the, photo at the photosphere uh, for the Eddington approximation. So when you account for non-gray effects, the opacities, etc., so you can have some more complicated behavior. So you see here that these relations depend on the gravity you're considering. So this is Saturn, Jupiter, uh, a, a, a brown dwarf, a much higher gravity object. And you can see that uh, as the gravity is increasing for a given uh, effective uh, temperature, the, uh, the one bar uh, temperature is moving down. And this is uh, uh, because here the pressure, the photospheric pressure is proportional to gravity. So the higher the gravity, uh, the uh, higher the pressure uh, from which uh, photons escape. Uh, okay, and this is because the, the, the scale height in the atmosphere becomes smaller, so, so uh, photons are able to ex escape directly from uh, uh, greater pressures. Okay, so let's uh, go to simple solutions of uh, the hydrostatic equilibrium. Well, a very simple one is, uh, uh, so for the, for the central pressure, is to use uh, uh, this and simply um, is there no? Okay. Um, is there? Yeah. Otherwise, I have that. <laughs> ah, okay. It's better. Yes. Do you get the full service? Wow. Oh, thanks. <laughs> 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 so, uh, so you 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 can write that delta p over delta m is equal to uh, uh, minus g m over. So uh, uh, we w we are, we're averaging. Okay. So so delta p is is pressure central pressure. Uh, uh, minus uh, uh, surface pressure, so it's really, it's really central pressure. Um, uh, we won't need the, the sign because it's delta M. So uh, uh, M, uh, uh, you're integrating that, so this is on average M over 2, and you're assuming that R is uh, uh, R over 2, uh, and, uh, and delta M, this is M. Uh, so that's uh, uh, so basically you have PC which is equal to uh, so you have uh, 4 pi uh, 2 4 divided by 4 pi uh, divided by 2 uh, gm square over r4 and then you get this uh, 2 over pi Okay, so basically, uh, uh, what, what, what is to be remembered is that the central pressure scales as the mass squared and inversely to the radius uh, to the fourth power. Uh, uh, you can also uh, use, uh, assume you have a uniform density. Uh, I, I will let you... Uh, uh, do that, you just have to integrate that, assuming that 
uh, uh, m uh, that uh, m is equal to uh, uh, four point four three. So if you hold that constant, you can easily uh, uh, get to that uh, uh, equation. Uh, uh, so in, in uh, here you can see that if you, uh, uh, as a function of, of density, if you know the density, uh, the pressure will scale with the density square and the radius uh, square. I mean you can play with the numbers. But basically, uh, when you plug in the numbers, uh, try it for, for Jupiter with a mass, uh, uh, well, w in the table, t 10 to the 30 grams and a radius of 7, 10 to the 9 centimeters, you get to a pressure which is uh, PC, oh, okay, I'm just going to, PC will be uh, 10 to the 14 uh, in CGS units, so it's DIN per square centimeter. Uh, so that's uh, so that's about uh, ten uh, ten to the eight uh, bars, or uh, hundred megabars. Like So between what we were talking about in the atmosphere and the center, we have uh, uh, eight orders of magnitude uh, increase in pressure. So it's a really a huge range. So you can do better. You can uh, uh, actually calculate what's called polytropic solutions. Uh, and the idea is that if, if you know what the, the temperature is doing, and uh, 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 so you, uh, you can get a, a very simple relation between pressure and, and density <coughs> in your interior. Um, and, uh, uh, and then you, you use this, this relation to uh, uh, calculate uh, a solution for the hydrostatic equilibrium. Um, so, for example, if you have uh, an ideal gas um, and, uh, and you're adiabatic, okay, so uh, you know that uh, dt, uh, uh, dln, uh, sorry, ln t over dln p, which is by definition nabla t, uh, you know that this is equal to the, to the adiabatic value. And this adiabatic value uh, for perfect gas, it will be R over Cp. And uh, so for, uh, uh, for uh, monoatomic gas, uh, Cp will be uh, uh, 5 half of R. So this will be uh, 2 over 5, so 0 0.4. Uh, okay, so you know you have the, this relation. So this means that T over T0 is equal to P over P0 to the power uh, nabla. And, uh, okay, so, so uh, basically you're uh, using the, the fact that the temperature structure as I drew P log in the Look, P in the atmosphere here uh, 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 becomes uh, fixed by, by the adiabat because of convection. Um, and uh, you have P is equal to rho R T over mu for a perfect gas. Uh, so T is like that. So P will be proportional to rho uh, P nabla add, so you have uh, P proportional to rho um, uh, 1 divided by 1 minus nabla add. Okay, so that's uh, rho 
five third in that case if you do the math so you see that for this very simple relation uh, I mean for this very simple uh, assumption uh, with an ideal gas uh, adiabatic structure we have a, a relation between pressure and density okay but wh what we did when doing that is we we forced the a solution uh, of course uh, uh, using ideal gas but also using a temperature structure that's predefined uh, so in that case you don't uh, you don't need the, the full set of equations. Uh, you just need the, the hydrostatic equilibrium and the mass continuity equation, which is actually a Poisson equation. So here uh, you write dp over dr is equal to d phi over dr times rho. So basically uh, uh, defining uh, uh, g the gravity is equal to uh, d phi over dr. Okay, and uh, so uh, uh, phi is the gravitational potential. Uh, then uh, uh, you can uh, 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 make a change of, uh, uh, of variables. Uh, so you define Z as AR and uh, uh, A uh, so you can show that uh, oh, that's the You can uh, uh, actually, uh, you do dp, uh, yes, uh, so dp over dr, uh, what time is it, uh, it's already, uh, so you, uh, using, using this, this equation, uh, uh, you can show that uh, uh, the, a, a good uh, constant to use to re redimension the, the z is this a, which, which is that. But it, it takes a little bit of math to, uh, to show that. Um, and, uh, okay, so I'll try. So, which is the phi. Uh, so dp over dr. Uh, we can probably do the math. What? We can do the math. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Let's let's move on. Uh. Um, then uh, uh, you get to this this equation, which is the Lane-Emden equation, uh, which actually combines this and that. Uh, it's it's very well known in uh, in stellar structure. Uh, uh, so n is the is uh, the exponent, uh, the polytropic exponent here, polytropic index, uh, and uh, uh, w basically is the uh, ratio of the um, gravitational potential to the to the central potential with uh, a gravitational potential that is defined uh, in that case, and, and that's the trick here uh, when you do the, the integration, uh, so that it is zero at the surface of your object, okay? Uh, so then you can, you can derive that. Uh, what? Yes, in, in, in uh, yes, yes, in, in stars, uh, it's the case. Uh, and uh, uh, it's also uh, related to rho over rho c uh, to the power 1 over n. Uh, we will see 
for uh, giant planets that we get a s uh, an equation of state that becomes completely independent with temperature when you have a degenerate electron gas. So in that case, this analogy uh, uh, is, not, uh, is not valid anymore. Uh, okay. So, uh, yeah, basically, uh, the, the solutions uh, of W as a function of Z are solutions like uh, like that. And uh, so the, the, the place where W is equal to zero defines the outer radius of your object. Uh, and uh, and you, you, you don't uh, uh, look at solutions uh, further than that. And, and these, the different lines correspond to different uh, values of n, uh, okay, depending on the different uh, polytropes. So for, for n equals, uh, for n equal 1, for example, uh, equal 1, you have w uh, of z, which is equal to sinus pi z over pi z. If I'm correct. Um, okay, so when we have that, uh, we can we can have uh, we can rederive all the physical quantities. So, for for example, uh, the mass is uh, uh, sum of uh, is the integral of four pi i square rho dr. So. Uh, <laughs> yes, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> so, and we have the, sorry, we have the lane m then equation that we need. So I'm going to put it here. Um, so that's, um, and then, um, and uh, uh, so then we have, uh, so this is some, uh, so we put the four pi here, the uh, A square for R, the rho C, uh, uh, here, so, and then we integrate uh, from 0 to Z, we make the change of, uh, uh, so Z square, so rho over rho C becomes W uh, power n times dz and I count uh, so there's three okay and so uh, so this is uh, if I use the lane and then equation so this is the 
square here. Uh, so basically, you have the derivative of this, and then uh, and then this is this can be written uh, z over r um, uh, z over r to the third power. And uh, uh, so, so then you, you have exactly uh, this relation. So m over r is equal to 4 pi rho c times r third minus 1 over z uh, dw over dz. So basically what uh, uh, I'm going to redraw this. Uh, see the the interesting thing there is that the relation between uh, mass and radius uh, depends actually on the on the slope of of this uh, relation at point z and the the final mass uh, of, of your planet depends only on 4 pi rho c r r uh, to the cube times the derivative at, at this point here, uh, z equal z n. So you can, you can do that uh, for the, I mean, the, for the radius, uh, this is given uh, directly here. So, uh, um, uh, it's it just through the uh, this change of, of variables. So basically, you have the radius is equal to z n times this uh, this expression. Uh, remember, n is the adiabatic uh, is the polytropic uh, index, and k is the constant in front of the uh, p rho relation. Uh, and, and it's proportional to rho c over 1 minus n divided by 2n. So uh, with that, you can uh, calculate a relation between uh, uh, radius and, and mass. Uh, basically, what you do is that you say that rho c is proportional to... Um, uh, m over r cube, and then you have uh, uh, so m r cube like that, and so you plug that in uh, the last uh, equation. So you have r, uh, sorry, r, r is equal to uh, is proportional to so that we'll keep the k k one half and uh, m over r cube power 1 minus n divided by 2n. And then you get, by, by uh, moving that here, you get that expression. So it, it's, it's a very fundamental expression. Uh, and uh, in, in stellar physics, uh, so it tells you that if, if k, if we forget the k, if, it's co if that is constant, radius is proportional to mass to a certain power, and this will depend on your adiabatic uh, uh, index. Uh, so depending on how the energy is transported or how the equation behaves, you will have a different dependency between mass and radius. Okay, and so in, in real models, uh, you can show for uh, that uh, 10 Jupiter mass planet, 1 Jupiter mass planets, and 0.1 Jupiter ma mass planets have a, a polytropic index that uh, is between 0 0.5 and 1.5. It slowly uh, increases uh, from a very low value. Uh, so a very low value is characteristic of an incompressible object. Uh, to something that is more compressible and tends towards the, the 1.5, uh, 
at, at large masses. So you can see that, uh, uh, well, there's a lot of structure here in the atmosphere, uh, and uh, mm, yeah, slightly deeper interior, and then you, you get something uh, uh, quite, uh, quite constant. So uh, strangely, by complete coincidence for Jupiter, uh, we are at uh, uh, index of one uh, for quite a, a, a good fraction of the of the interior. So I it's it's a solution that has been used. Uh, you, you have an analytical solution, so it's very convenient to use it. So now let's look at mass radius relations. I believe uh, you've seen some of these. Uh, with Kepler objects. Uh, oh, this is an old plot, so it's not very heavily populated at all. Uh, and uh, this is, uh, uh, these curves show the mass radius uh, relation for a um, uh, uh, solar composition sphere that has contracted for 5 billion years uh, for pure hydrogen and helium and then adding a core is something like that. But uh, basically, what, what you can see is that you have this, this kind of, of uh, uh, shape uh, with a maximum at around four Jupiter masses. And uh, th so this is Jupiter, this is Saturn. So you can see that for all these objects, when if, even if you multiply the mass by uh, more than a factor of 10, you don't get very significant uh, variations in, in uh, radius. Um, so can we uh, explain this with the, our polytropic relations? Uh, well, okay, so this the is... The polytropic index of Jupiter is one currently, or even if we move out, would it matter? Would it change it? If, 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 if you wait another uh, 100 GDs? Uh, yeah, it, I don't think it will, uh, it will uh, change that much. Um, uh, uh, I don't think so. so Jupiter and but as soon as it formed, the uh, was much different, right? Yeah, yeah. The uh, N is is much different. Yeah, more different uh, early on. Yes, yes, absolutely. Uh, because then you're m more into uh, uh, an ideal gas regime. But uh, even if you're quite far from that, uh, so not you have to begin with, but not for long. Yeah, not for long. It's it waited 100 million years. It's already down to within 10% of its current So we have this relation, so R equals M over uh, 1 minus N divided by 3 minus N. So with N equals 0 0.6, okay, we have a very good match here. Uh, one, you see, we, we should be at a, at a maximum where radius is independent of, of mass for, for one. Uh, and should be at 1.3 here, uh, but qualitatively, uh, you can see that it, it, it does uh, uh, explain uh, uh, the, the, the shape. But then, what about, what about these objects here? You see, it seems there's uh, an inverse relation. So wha what is happening there? Well, actually, you can, if you use the relation that involves K, uh, uh, then uh, <coughs> uh, you, you can show that the, the situation can become a, a, a little <coughs> bit more uh, complicated uh, uh, because when, uh, because of this, um, uh, if you have a high irradiation for hot Jupiters, what will happen is that you will maintain the atmosphere at a fixed temperature. Uh, if it's at a fixed temperature uh, and you have, uh, you're using the Eddington approximation, so your, your photospheric pressure uh, P0 is about uh, G over kappa. Uh, and uh, so you, you're Assuming that uh, this is uh, so, uh, uh, G will scale as uh, m over r square, and uh, uh, kappa, 
you're assuming it's also uh, proportional to uh, P to the pressure because uh, opacity increases uh, with higher pressures. Uh, you're using the fact that P zero uh, you're in the atmosphere so the ideal gas relation is valid so uh, you have uh, R T uh, over mu rho zero and this is fixed okay so so pressure and, and uh, density are linked uh, and uh, uh, so with that with that you can you can plug that in the the polytropic relation and uh, uh, so p equals kappa rho one plus one over n and show that that k is proportional to m over r square to the power minus one over two n okay so um, uh, so in, in, in that case, we are uh, uh, constraining the, the adibat uh, by the, the irradiation at, uh, in the atmosphere. And in that case, the, the relation changes. Uh, so you have R proportional to M w uh, to the power 1 half minus N divided by 3 minus N. Uh, so in that case, for n for n equal 1 you you have r proportional to m minus uh, 1 uh, 1 uh, one fourth so so the the, the relation uh, changes directly here and and uh, uh, so that that can explain the uh, this, this relation for heavily irradiated objects, okay. But it's it's very uh, qualitative, okay, because we're doing something that is not uh, 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 completely right. Uh, you know, fixing the, uh, the the surface conditions and assuming that everything will stay the same. Uh, but at least it gives uh, an idea of why we have uh, this kind of behavior. Yes. 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 Exactly. Exactly. So it's uh, unfortunately the, there is so much you can do by hand, uh, and, and then you have to to use uh, numerical calculations to see uh, what's happening. Uh, okay. I get. I guess uh, <laughs> I've used my time. <laughs> uh, are, are there any any general question at this point? Uh, we have lots of questions, but I'm sure there will be more. Well, there were lots of questions during the. <laughs> yes. So it's not quite about the internal structure. It's like. Did I get it right that in the beginning you say Uranus and Neptune rotation period is about 17 hours? Uh, yes, that's my recollection. 17 hours. Okay, so my question is to Ram, actually. <laughs> A little bit, sorry. Because uh, yesterday during his lecture, he, um, you recommended that Uranus and Neptune probably form without joint impacts. But um, if you only form form them without joint impact, could, could they have such, I mean, fast spin rate? Yeah, there are probably ways to get fast spin rate, but maybe that's not the time to discuss it. We can maybe discuss it in the, in the evening to go yeah, the yeah. discussion. I don't want to take the, uh, uh, And what I said about Ching being asking questions is a compliment. It's not a complaint. <laughs> okay, yeah. so good. Go on. Oh, I asked because nobody asked. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> She's setting up the <laughs> <laughs> Uranus and Neptune do, of course, have 
uh, through also Earth masses of gas. And the gas is added with vorticity. That is a way of providing <coughs> angular momentum. And that's a very interesting issue for Jupiter and Saturn, what the initial spin states were and how much angular momentum was shared, because they probably had this. Yeah. So actually, so. Uh, we measure the rotation rate of Jupiter and Saturn through their magnetic field. How do we measure the rotation rate of Uranus and Neptune? Oh, through their magnetic okay. fields, uh, uh, also. Well, with Neptune, it's highly uncertain. It's yeah, also for your I think we have to do some caveats. Ah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, actually, there's uh, something I, which reminds me of that, that here uh, you have these winds, uh, uh, and these, uh, these zero are the so called system three. Uh, 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 systems and they they're set by the r rotation of the magnetic field that was measured by uh, Voyager. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so it gives a it gives a zero point that that is linked to the rotation in the interior, presumably, uh, uh, with the idea, which is probably wrong to some extent, that the interior rotates as a solid body. And that the the surface layer is rotating uh, uh, in a more complex way, uh, and actually for Saturn. In which way? Uh, what What do you mean? It's wrong that the core is not solid body, or that the yeah, that the interior is not uh, rotating as a perfect solid body, probably. It's also there is a big difference between Uranus and Neptune because they it's not clear that where the magnetic field is generated, while for for Jupiter and Saturn is rather deep. Um, for Uranus and Neptune, it can be further out, um, and as I said, the magnetic field itself is much more complex. So, and also in terms of magnetic field measurements for Uranus and Neptune with the Voyager uh, 2, they didn't spend enough time to really, you know, complete uh, a rotation period. So th that was done kind of with, with extrapolations, uh, which which makes this this estimate a bit bit weaker. Yeah, yeah, and it's important because we're basing uh, the calculations I will talk about uh, in the next lecture uh, on the interior structure on these rotation rates. Uh, so it's important. And for Saturn, we've had a, uh, a big issue that you probably heard about that they, they found that the uh, rotation of the magnetic field has changed, apparently. Uh, but this is not due to uh, a real change of Saturn's magnetic field, of course, or, or Saturn's rotation, but it's due ta to the fact that what they interpreted as a periodicity uh, due to Saturn's deep magnetic field was, al was in fact related to a combination of uh, uh, um, uh, solar wind uh, and uh, Saturn's magnetic field. Uh, uh, so that the, the, that frequency that was measured can change, and we don't know exactly where the, the uh, deep uh, magnetic field rotation is at the moment. Does this theory uh, have some implication in order to define the Pluto as a mainstream planet? Oh, no. Uh, it has no implication. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. It's <laughs> short. Yes. So, regarding the measurement of magnetic field, there's also synchrotron radiation. It's very important for nuclear particles. This is another measurement of magnetic field. Yeah, I also wanted to add that any magnet has a marvelous aurora. One of the moons. Yes, yes. Okay, let's thank Tristan again. Okay, thank you. Coffee break and we meet again at 11. <laughs>